Мотор! Начали! From bequeath of Alexander III to Nicholas II, I hand you the kingdom that God has handed me. I acquired it 13 years ago from my father who bled to death. On that tragic day, I chose my own path. My only interest was the value of my people and the prominence of Russia. Let your faith in God and the sanctity of our royal duty stand as a foundation of your life. Try to always hold an independent position when dealing with foreign policy concerning the affairs of domestic politics. First and foremost, look up to the Orthodox Church. She has saved Russia numerous times during political distress. Avoid wars by all means and remember to strengthen our country's family units. For family is at the heart of every state. Emperor Alexander III. Look! A ship sailing! swans there's a knight galloping across the field where I can't see anything over there look there are horses Vera come down from there right now stop this childishness Irina look Papa but a car let's go <gasps> you crazy girl you almost fell Irina come Vasily, come on, bring the camera. You know I just couldn't resist. 25 horsepower, 47 miles per hour. We came here fast, as if we had wings. Take a look, how perfect these lines are. Hmm, Monsha? Vera, as dirty as a street urchin. Alexander. Yes, yes. Speak to her, she only listens to you. Right, Vera. Papa, please teach me how to drive a car. As if this isn't enough. Guys, you're disturbing me. Hold on a minute. This is a Russo Bolt, the first Russian car in history. There are only five of these in the world. All of them are in museums. Do you want to steal it from the museum? <laughs> No, Andre. I would like you to help me. I would like to purchase it. The owner doesn't know its real price. I sent her my experts, but she wants you to estimate the price. Me? Someone has told her that you're a chief specialist. The owner is Russian, from the first wave of emigration. Apologies, Michelle. You can't smoke here. Safety rules. The challenge is in the following. To evaluate the vehicle, at a price of around, let's say, uh, 300,000 euros. <laughs> 300 for a Russo Bolt. This car's priceless. 
Have you ever thought about buying out this garage? When's it possible to view the car? Now we're talking. The sooner the better. Russo Bolt is in Paris. Have you been there? No. You will be met by one of my trusted individuals and introduced to the woman. All expenses are on me. Is it a deal? English is fine. Are you okay? Yes, thank you. I'm fine. I'm so sorry. Bijou! 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 Oh, merci, merci. Thank you very much. Are you standing to better see our cards? There are only two companions that life has introduced. Cold snow, white radiance, and red bright hyacinth. This flower's blood and fieriness helps to accept my lot. As fate cast life Turum. this tragedy, Pass. love, victory, and loss. Please, sir, receive. Baron always wins. He's favored by fortune. For our sovereign emperor, gentlemen, Ura! What's your name? My name is Efim, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Efim. Well, quickly, Efim. Come. Come here. <laughs> Come. Oh. Lieutenant Repnin, do you recall saying I'm favored by fortune? Let's test it. Is it fated for this poor man to be killed and me exiled to Siberia? What is this audacity? You're drunk, Levin. Please go home. Ivan Kalovich, I say? beg no. you, just what did you say? Hey, God, hey, I'm say. drunk. Get a hold of yourself! It's all good. <clears throat> I'm at your service, Baron. For goodness sake, forgive me. Did I frighten you? Are you hurt? No, not at all. It's just no one rides here. It's our park. I'm terribly sorry. If only I knew. Our regiment has recently stationed here. I'm in the lifeguard regiment. Lieutenant Andrei Petrovich Domatov. What will happen now? Will you fight the Baron in a duel? Princess Chernysheva, Vera Alexandrovna. Sorry. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh. 
cigarettes are not permitted, but dogs are? Ah, Monsieur Kolikov, are you aware that dogs here have more rights than people? Siege Liv Emanilovich. Andrei Petrovich, or just Andrei. It's a pleasure. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if these dogs will soon sit in Parliament. If I was a dog, they would allow me to smoke here. Let's get out of this hornet's nest. Since Michelle is paying for everything, eat at the hotel. This city is expensive. On bonjour, Nelnu. Regarding these, let Michelle pay for all the transport costs. Make sure you pass this on to him. My grandmother, the Countess, lost everything during the revolution. But she raved about Petersburg, dreaming that one day she will walk to Fontana. Ooh, and over there, we have just passed the Lupa. This is a world treasure trove of art. And over there, not visible behind that house, is Montparnasse, a very famous place. You won't find cheap housing there. What are you, an idiot? Can you not pass here? You know, this city is unbearable. No one knows how to drive here. The most important thing is you must please the princess. Otherwise, she won't speak to you. She's a very proper lady. Are you sure she's waiting? Hmm. Yes, we agreed on it. I warned and wrote to her. This is not like her. Elisaveta Ivanovna is punctual, like the clocks of an English queen. Why not call her by telephone? Eh. She doesn't believe in such commodities. Computers, cell phones, gravestones. Oh, I know where we can find her. Where? At the cemetery. Here, young man. You shall see the real Russian Paris. People, their fates. By the way, my uncle, of Georgian nationality, was married five times, all the time on the most luxurious of women. Then one day he said, leave. When I die, I want to be buried in Saint Genevieve de Bois because I want to lie down with Bunin. I said, of course I'll grant your request, but under one condition that you fulfill mine. I want to lie down with your wife. He was so surprised. Ha ha, but how? She is alive and well. I said, well, that's it. But these are details about which intelligent people should not speak. Everyone says, Ivan Karlovich, that you are a real favorite of fortune. Yet I simply don't understand what does it consist of. Is it your card wins? Or is it the fact that you have the most beautiful horse <laughs> in your regiment? I am indeed so very flattered, princess, that every time I am a target of your wit. But my horse is not only damn beautiful, she has a temper. And I like to tame the wild brumbies. Mikhail Ivanovich Tereshenko. But I believe the real favorite of fortune is Mr. Mikhail Ivanovich. They say he's fabulously rich. Thank you, Mikhail Ivanovich. Where's his wife? Happiness is measured in money for you? <laughs> Baron von Lieven, I am vain like any other woman. I love clothes and trinkets, hence why I would never pick a husband who is not rich enough to fulfill all my whims. Gentlemen. Mihail Ivanovich. What do you think about the murder of Archduke Ferdinand? Russian people are going to demand emergency measures, you know. From the Tsar. Victorious war. The best way to raise the patriotic spirit. The war is necessary to you, Mr. Tereshenko. To big industrialists. And to our European neighbors, for whom Russian property is like a bone in the throat. Introducing the maid of honor to her majesty. 
Her Excellency Countess Nadezda Pavlovna Subtsova. Nadezda Pavlovna. Olga Andreevna. Lieutenant Andrei Petrovich Dolmatov. Lieutenant Alexei Yurevich Rapnin. Andrei Petrovich, he saved the Baron. Godmother, dearest, tell them that they must reconsider. What are these manners? Please, forgive us. What for? Lips of an infant speak the truth. Gentlemen, I don't know what your dispute is about, but promise us immediately you shall reconcile. Countess, I intended to do so myself. Lieutenant Dolmatov warned me against the most absurd act in my life. Thank you, Godmother. It's fine, dearest. Ladies and gentlemen, let the ball begin. It's just a picture of this girl and this inscription without a date or name. There are a lot of wonderful people with sad fates. Previously, they believed that everyone who died for the homeland required a memory. So here in St. Genevieve, we have many empty graves, some with no names. Does it mean a person could have died? Somewhere far, but their monument stands here at the cemetery? Elisaveta Ivanovna, dearest, we had agreed. I can't believe this. I have been searching for you, running all around the hotel and cemetery. Greetings, Liev Emanuelevich. Darling, let me introduce you to Andrei Petrovich Kulikov, Princess Yeserskaya. It's a pleasure. Andrei Petrovich is the biggest specialist in antique vehicles from Russia. Oh, please forgive me. It has totally escaped my mind. How good that you have found me. Let's view the car. Let's go, Andrei Petrovich. Of course, I regret selling the car. But I have started a project that requires investments. <laughs> this is what the business people say? In short, I am in desperate need of this money urgently. Elisaveta Ivanovna, if you ever meet a person who doesn't need money, let me know. I shall marry off my daughter to him. Both, in fact. And I'll make him the Prime Minister. Michel promised 300,000. He promised. Is the car in a bad condition? Well... <clears throat> Elisaveta Ivanovna. Yes? I need time for examination.
you probably consider me a silly young lady. And I, meanwhile, read almost every grand novel there is. Even Maupassant, despite mother hiding it from me. Vera Alexandrovna. Vera. There's something I want to tell you. What, Andrei Petrovich? I may be ridiculously stupid, and I shouldn't have hoped. But every morning I wake up, I have one joyous thought. And that's you. I think how great it is to have you in this world. How great that we were destined to meet. again shall reconcile Europe and establish peace and prosperity everywhere. Oh God, I've always dreamt about this day. What happened, Alyosha? A war, cousin. The emperor has declared a war on Germany. Lieutenant, have you heard the news? A war, again. Dear Vera Alexandrovna, my angel, throughout these three long years when camping in trenches, I live because of you. My thoughts are with you, and I hope that we shall meet again. Today, I was assigned to Petrograd. I hope to be there by early March. I'm waiting on the minutes when we shall meet again. I dream of embracing you and never letting go. Respects, Irina Sana. I dare hope this gift will be received favorably. No, oh, sir. Just because I love luxury and would never marry a poor man, that doesn't mean that I would accept gifts from a... an antiquated businessman. Tomorrow, this businessman shall hold the fate of the Empire... in his hands. It is impossible to understand the meaning of this revolution. What shall happen now, Mihail Ivanovich? Are they going to drive us away from our homes and settle the workers here? Countess. Do not exaggerate. The February crisis only showed the impotence of the Tsarist government. But we being the patriots, we have a plan to save Russia. Bravo, bravo. Excellent. The intentions of your political group, Mr. Tereshenko, has long been known to us all. It's a conspiracy against the emperor. Autocracy is an obsolete form of government. The people of this country, they yearn for freedom. It is not the freedom that you want. Thank you, Mashari. You want power. What is freedom without power? One, two, three. I slept, everyone. Look at them. <laughs> Staff Captain Andrei Petrovich Dolmatov would like to see your lordship. Invite him. Andrei Petrovich, I'm very glad. I've heard about your courage. Congratulations on the award. Andrei Petrovich, it's very nice of you to visit us. I join in with your congratulations. Will you wait for Vera? She will be very happy. She spends all of her days in the hospital and tells us nothing. Absolutely nothing. Happy to see you well, Domotov. Likewise. Your Excellency, I ask permission to speak with you. Alone. Do me the honor. Come into my office. Please, have a seat. Thank you. Hmm, I know. The situation at the fronts is very difficult. War is like rust. It corrodes and destroys the humane in people. We begin to rage. If we do not come to our senses, 
then someday, the war will destroy all of civilization. What is it that you wanted? I pointed on a vacation after being wounded. And most importantly, I hope to speak with Vera Alexandrovna. I dare to ask the hand of your daughter. What? Come in. A messenger came from the headquarters of the General Voikov. Invite him. Alexander. Huh? What happened? It is finished, mon cher. Russia is doomed. The Emperor has officially signed his abdication to the throne. Finally, it has started. I do apologize. I need to go. Urgently. Uh, uh. Oh! Waiter! Quickly, bring him pillows! <laughs> hey, you there! Party. Champagne! <laughs> Away with the Tsar! Hey! Uh, gentlemen! Right. It's the last day of coming! Let's start this party right! Let's go! We shall have a revolution Let's so grand! Everyone should be never heard of it! <laughs> Down with autocracy! Stop this, ladies. Let's come inside. Damn the song! I shall confiscate your weapon. Vodka. I will take you home. Tell me, Dolmatov. Do you understand what it is they want? All you hear is down, down. Well, suppose it's down with us. But what's instead? And this crocodile, Tereshenko. He made a military loan of 10 million in gold. But what's the difference now? Today is such a time, can't care less about it. If I was in your place, I would have grabbed Vera Alexandrovna, sat on a horse, and galloped off to Switzerland to enjoy the waterfalls. When you have the love of such a lady, all the rest just shouldn't matter. Perhaps that is so, but the war is still on. The war is lost, Dolmatov! It's over! We took an oath of allegiance to the king, and the king is no more. Russia is no more. And to these new masters set of shingles, I refuse to serve. They will lead us to destruction. Yes, there is no king, nor the old Russia. But there's faith, honor, and our homeland. Who if not us? Please, your honor. How are you standing in front of an officer? You bastard! <gasps> I have no idea what shall become of Mama. Father decided to conceal his illness. All my emotions are buried somewhere inside. I constantly think about what must be done. Elyosha! Repnin? Cousin, it's so good to see you. There are two companions that life has introduced. Cold snow, white radiance, and red bright hyacinth. This flower's blood and fieriness 
helps to accept my love. Love, victory, and loss. Andrei Petrovich, they betrayed us. Generals, ministers, the king. We were deceived. They betrayed Russia. Hush, Alyosha, the doctor will be here in a moment. Vera Alexandrovna, I've been writing poems. It's true. Women love poets. It's true. Please, doctor. To the operating room. are closed. They ruined our estate. Burnt our library. I am absolutely lost. I don't know what to do, how to live. It's fine, Mama. I know what to do. I didn't want to tell you this, darling, but you shall find out anyway. Kornilov and Zarskoya Selo arrested the Empress with her children. To plant a new tree, having not chopped the previous roots, <laughs> is impossible. You took our palaces, dismissed the police, opened prisons. How will you hold back these people from looting and godlessness? Why are you firing up so much? Did you ever have a palace serve on leaving? Or perhaps are saddened that you, the aristocrats, with your arrogance, are facing the oblivion? Suppose we do face oblivion. Who shall come instead of us? You? Yes. Us. As people of enterprise, while you were taught your poetry and dancing in the corpse of pages, we stood behind the counter in our father's shops, receiving our blows and first coins that we would hide behind the icons. We are those who managed to rise out of dirt. We fought for it, tearing it with our own teeth. We're the flesh and blood. With this nation. And Russia will rise with us. Resurrect like a phoenix from the ashes. History is written by winners, and the losers ought to disappear. Ha! Take that, idiot! Move away. Ladies, move away from the windows. Over there. God, how have we angered you? There, have it! Scoundrel scum. You wanted freedom? Now try to pacify this whole rabble. No. 
Mikhail Ivanovich, the story shall not be written by you. You better return to your little shop. They probably smashed the windows there as well. Irina, I... Gosh. You see, I can't even find the words. Damn it. It's all because of my damn pride. I... There is no need. Please, there is no need to say anything. Wait, I have to tell you something. What? What could you possibly tell me? That you love me? Why? What is the point in doing that now? Yesterday a burnt mansion, today the stone, tomorrow a bullet in you? You have your war. Stop this. Hey, you. Release this woman. Nothing to see here. Get lost, Your Honor. I said let the woman go. Perhaps we should shorten this honor's tongue. He speaks too much. You scared? Thank you for your help, Your Honor. We are the Kolokovs, merchants. My wife, Nastasia, and my daughter, Maria. Rot, Mr. Domatov. And what is your full name? Andrei Petrovich. I shall always pray for you to our Father in Heaven and to St. Andrew the First. The honor is mine. Actually, our family has had a few celebrities. My cousin, on my grandmother's side, threw himself off the Eiffel Tower. Eh, all of Paris knew about him. Andrei Petrovich, are you fond of chamomile tea? Mihail Ivanovich, your tea. Yes, yes, thank you. Elizaveta Ivanovna, I've prepared the expert's conclusion. Three hundred thousand. That's a lot of money. I suggest avoiding delays in signing the contract. The agreement and the down payment, please. Yes. Thirty percent. This money is very useful. We can begin the construction work now. The princess began reconstructing her family manor. I'd call it something like a nest for royalties. He's laughing at my idea. It will take millions. The house was very badly damaged back then. But there are some things we can save. Elizaveta Ivanovna, sign and the money is yours. Don't sign it. What, what are you doing? Elizaveta Ivanovna, this car is worth more than 300,000. Much more. You can sell it at an auction for two or three million. I lied to you. Forgive me if you can. You idiot. You will regret this. Elizaveta Ivanovna. Elizaveta Ivanovna, please don't sell the car. <sighs> we will find the money for the manor. Come out for a moment. 
I haven't finished my tea. Drink up, then. Drink up. Well, as the French always say, bon voyage, which means have a good trip. I hope you haven't forgotten to throw a penny into the Seine River. No, I didn't. Ay, 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 what a shame. Wait, wait. Where? We can't stop here. You mad mad. Where are you going? <laughs> Andre, I do apologize, but we are late for the plane. I'm not going anywhere. I have to find her. Who is her? That girl. These Russians, my goodness. Dostoevsky. What are you honking for? Maybe my petrol is finished. Au revoir, bonjour. Pardon moi. Je cherche. How do I? It's all right. Stop the struggle. We can converse in English. Excuse me, there was a girl here. A girl? Here in my flat? Uh, she almost dropped the flower pot on my head from your window yesterday. I know, she is a mess. Don't worry, we will figure this all out. I think I know who you're talking about. I just recently got back from the holidays as well. Eladia! Come in, please. Well, here you are, my servant Eladia. She is not a woman, but a disaster. No, no, she had light blonde hair. And blue eyes, too. Elaria, go back to the kitchen. Ah, uh, well, judging by the photograph, the hairstyle, hat, dress, it's... It's 1914. Are you sure this is the girl you saw inside this flat? Here's a witness. He was present as well. Oh, Bijou? Bijou was there? Bijou, look, do you know this gentleman? Do you recognize this gentleman? Forgive me, perhaps I've made a mistake. Are you all right? Would you like some water? Tea, perhaps? There. That? That's a mannequin. Apologies. That's all right. Farewell, young man. It's a pity I couldn't help you. Goodness me. Psychos everywhere. A small beard is not significant enough description. I doubt I will be able to help you without a surname. Or a name. If we knew what country he was from? Well, my friend has told me he might be from Russia. Oh, from Russia. I think I know who you mean. But he left an hour ago. Oh, Andrei Petrovich. We've been evicted. Someone has bought our garage. Yeah, and I even know who did it, too.
the king's henchmen who bullied your fathers and sons out of the trenches into bullets of their pursuers. They are all enemies of the proletariat and the peasantry. We are just weapons of retaliation against the moribund class. And so we will crack down on every enemy of the Soviet regime. I Attention! Andrei Petrovich. Andrei. Aim! Do you want us to hunt? Andrei! Fire! Lie down. Still, still. Be still. You mustn't get up. Grandmother! Finally awake. Thank goodness. Mother of God, you were close to death. Three days you lay there unconscious. <laughs> Careful. You were delirious. Burning as if on fire. You kept calling out for someone. I said he shouldn't die. He can't. Grandma kept treating you. Shh. With herbs and prayers. She says, he shall live, and here you are alive. If not dead, then soon shall recover. I'm seeing Yegorich for herbs. Amasha. Kolikovna, remember me? You saved me and my parents in Petrograd from bandits. How are you, Masha Kulikova? But they can arrest you. It's fine. The farm is far. There are no rats here. If they arrive, we'll hide you in the cellar. Why are you here, Masha? Where's your family? My father was thrown into a nice hole in Petrograd. Me, Mama, and my brother came to our grandmother's. Both were shot by the rats. Only I got saved. Kind people helped us. I was so delighted to find you. <laughs> Does this mean you're all alone? <laughs> it's nothing. When you recover, we can go to Crimea. There are no rats there. I've prepared some peasants' clothing for you. Oh, my dear. Oh, my darling. Do what you will. But I shall not leave you.
I beg you. Don't leave. My love. Don't leave me. Is no Vera. You are delirious, Andre. I don't know how I can thank you, Masha Kulikova. Thank you for everything. God bless you. You should stay, Andrei Petrovich. You're still too weak to fight. Goodbye, Masha. Don't think badly of me. from the headman. Papers from the Rostov governor. Please, look. Madam, this is a military train. It does not take civilians. Wait! Why the hell are you touching me? Let go! Domotov. Captain. What a meeting. Please, please. Please come inside my carriage. I am not alone. I have a surprise. Sit down, Captain. Olga Andreevna. Alive? Andrei Petrovich, it's you. How are you? We suffered terribly. We've gone through so much. Death everywhere. Machine guns on the streets. Only Mikhail Ivanovich took care of us. Good morning, Andrei Petrovich. Is Vera Alexandrovna with you? She's somewhere in the hospital. We have lost her. Please find Vera and tell her we are setting off to Paris. This is a wild nation that couldn't accept liberty. They don't deserve it. Russia must be tamed by a whip and the gallows. There are no other ways. Help yourself, Captain. To our meeting. Andrei Petrovich, please join us. I will give you a position in the Allied military mission. Throw away those noble tinsels. Oaths, patriotism. These are different times. It's smart people who get to places.
Bring me those women. Yes. Irina. Mikhail Ivanovich. What's happening? Who are these women? What is this? Who are they? I, Captain Andrei Petrovich Dolmatov, Russian noble officer, order you to accept these women, take good care of them, and deliver them to a safe place as well. How scandalous. Mama, these women have not taken bread from hungry workers. They didn't steal from the treasury and didn't send thousands of people to die. They only sleep with men for money, just like your daughter. Come on, I will show you where to settle. Please, follow me. <laughs> if exporting, then everything. Your Honor, the sanitary convoy has arrived. them carefully. Standing. Get this train underway already. I demand it. I will die without you. You have to live. I'll find you in Paris! Paris has a few million of native French alone. It's insanity to be searching for a girl with nothing but a photograph. But she lives somewhere near the hotel. Find her, I beg of you. I'm doing everything I can. By the way, the princess, having received the money from selling the Russo Poultice, has already started the reconstruction work and asked me to tell you. She will be very pleased if you would be among the first visitors. Thank you. You see, Andrei Petrovich, this is not a mirage. It is the restored manner of Chernyshev. These people, such fates. By the way, have you found that girl? Not yet, but I'm still searching for her. I already bought a ticket to Paris. Well, as the French say, cherchez la femme. Coincidentally, the princess has a very pretty granddaughter. I do recommend you make her acquaintance. Elisaveta Ivanovna, theorist, hello. Andrei Petrovich, made a miracle. Th this is my car. That's right, and now it's yours again. Andrei Petrovich restored it and transferred it to the fund dedicated to the restoration of this manor. If only you knew how precious this car is to me. Well, I also took some part in the restoration. I regretted selling the car a hundred times. It's a memory of my father, Baron von Lieven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Baron is your father? Her maiden surname is von Lieven. 
Irina Alexander Chernyshevna married Baron Lieben. Elizaveta Ivanovna. The strangest things are happening to me. I feel that I've seen this house, this park. And most importantly, I loved a woman. But when? A hundred years ago. Andrei, you're a romantic. But then in St. Genevieve, this portrait of Vera, Captain Domatov. It's been a long time since I wanted to tell you what I knew of your father. It was March 1918. Parts of the volunteering army under the command of General Kornilov during the battle moved from Rostov to Yekaterinodar. Betrayed and driven out by their own people, they went into the unknown. The troops and a convoy of refugees were walking through lakes, watery mud roads, on no roads, doomed and lost within the thick fog. This first Cuban campaign would be called the Ice March. On that day, the rain poured all night. Towards the afternoon, it snowed heavily. The wind blew and blizzard began. Then the weather changed again. Suddenly, the frost struck and the wind became stronger, as if nature wanted to stop this fratricidal war. Everyone felt like a true Russian, not a betrayer. Everyone felt this togetherness. There were no classes, no social inequalities, no gender, language, age, or religion. Those with strong spirit refused to submit and went to the icy prairies in order to fight till their last breath for Russia, in the name of Russia. Prepare for crossing. Very well. <laughs> Your Honor, we have caught the spies. We're running away from the Reds. We're your brothers. <gasps> Let him climb into the water. Check if there's a ford. Sir, the water's freezing. It's, 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 it's as cold as ice. I'll die in there. To the water, you bastard. Go.
Baum und Hoch. Andrei Petrovich. Andrei! Irina? Irina? Great news. I just spoke to the attorney. My wife grants me the divorce. <sighs> Help me, please. What's this? I am leaving. What? Where? It doesn't matter. I work in the hospital, like Vera, or as a governess. Are you out of your mind? What a folly. Forgive me, I... I understand how much you have done for me, but... I am leaving. Why? What else can I do for you? Tell me. <sighs> you cannot possibly do that. You cannot bring back my father, my mother, sister, my home, or my homeland. Forgive me, Mikhail Ivanovich. I'm exhausted and I... Every time I look at you, and I think it's him, this is all his fault. What's my fault? You are the meaning of my whole life. You're the only thing that I have left. I love you. But I positively hate you. I won't let you. You told me about liberty and democracy, but you desired only power. You've ruined us all. Thousands of great and most noble people and everything for the sake of the damn money. Be quiet. You know it's not what I wanted. They have all died and you, you are alive. Excuse me. Monsieur? I am looking for Vera Alessandrovna Chernusheva. I have a letter. I am sorry. The lady is no longer with us. She died.
have to give you something that rightfully belongs to you. This letter is from your great-grandfather. My dear, my love, Vera. If you're reading this letter, it means that it wasn't destined for us to meet. But I know that the feeling that had joined us can't be subjected to death. It can't go unnoticed. My love for you shall be stored in my heart as a most precious relic. Before meeting you, it was as if my soul had been silent for millennia. But from that moment, there was music. Dearest Vera, I know that somewhere among the stars will always be the memory of our love. And perhaps centuries later, we will be back again on Earth to find each other. And together, we will live through our unspent happiness. Без 
бесконечность.